So, you know, cross-country flying is really, in, in a lot of ways, what it's all about, right? It's like why we get into it. When you put your family, your kids, your wife, your loved ones in an airplane, uh, you want to make sure you're doing everything as safely as possible. If you take that old school process, that old school skeptical mentality, and be systematic about the way you approach planning on the new stuff, like for flight, it's extremely powerful and you'll be far safer, but it really requires building on the lessons of the past while incorporating the tools of the present. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. mission this morning is another family trip to Palm Springs. I think we're getting this down by now. Um, we figured out for the baby anyway that if she listens to the Bose headset at home, Bluetooth, you know, to music or whatever, that maybe she'll keep it on better in the airplane. We're going to test that theory today. Flare prop. San Carlos Ground, Skyline 123 Tango Zulu. Julia parking with Tango, ready to copy and taxi IFR Palm Springs. Skyline 123 Tango Zulu, San Carlos Ground, clear to Palm Springs Airport, off of runway 12, fly runway heading, radar vectors Woodside as filed. Climb and maintain 2100, expect 9000, five minutes after departure. NorCal 135.65, squawk 3323. Okay, we're clear to the Palm Springs Airport on departure off runway 12. It's runway heading, then radar vectors Woodside, then as filed. Initially, climb maintain 2100, expect 9000 in five minutes. Departure 13565, squawk 3323. Scanning 3 Tango Zulu, read back correct. Verify have Tango, runway 12, run up, taxi via Juliet. Well, we do have Tango, taxi to runway 12 via Juliet, 123 Tango Zulu. So, you know, cross-country flying is really, in, in a lot of ways, what it's all about, right? It's like why we get into it. We want to be able to take an airplane and go from point A to point B, maybe fly ourselves on vacation, fly our families, maybe do it for work. But really, when we learn how to fly, what we're trying to do is get a lot of utility out of the airplane. San Carlos Tower, Skyline 122 Tango Zulu, ready for takeoff, 1-2. Scanning 3 Tango Zulu, runway 1-2, clear for takeoff, wind variable to 3. Clear for takeoff, runway 1-2, 1-2-3 uh, Tango Zulu. It is checked. Airspeed's alive. There's a rotate. Skyline 3 Tango Zulu, contact NorCal departure. Okay, go to NorCal. Uh, 123 Tango Zulu. NorCal, Skyline 123 Tango Zulu is 500, climbing 2100. 123 Tango Zulu, NorCal departure, radar contact, San Francisco, altimeter 3021. 3021, 123 Tango Zulu. And uh, just be advised, sir, once we get up on top here, we're likely going to cancel IFR and proceed VFR to Palm Springs. 3 Tango Zulu, Roger. This weekend, I took my family to Palm Springs and got to enjoy uh, one of the most amazing parts of general aviation, which is no schedule. You know, we were supposed to leave yesterday, but we decided um, that we needed another day. We're here at my in-laws, and so we just called Signature and said we'll be another night. And, and there you go, the plane's sitting there waiting for us. So I never rush the family when we're flying uh, GA. Usually don't rush the family, because having no schedule is a huge part of the joy. And yeah, NorCal, one, two, three, Tango Zulu, like to cancel IFR at this time. Or three, Tango Zulu, uh, Roger, I'm maintaining VFR and uh, your present squat code and maintain VFR outside the class Bravo. Resume on navigation. Roger that on nav outside the Bravo. We'll keep the squawk 123 Tango Zulu. All right, Thank for you. the cruise, we've got throttle, prop, cow flaps, rudder, landing taxi mixture, engine instruments. All right, checklist is complete. So right now it's just me talking to you. Uh, my family can't hear us, and that's because of this isolation button, this pilot isolation. Pretty much all audio panels have the ability to isolate the pilot. And I think it's a really, really good idea when you're flying with your family to know where that is. 
Uh, beyond a good idea, this is going to be a tool like, like a stethoscope to checking a heartbeat. You really can't fly with your family without either training them to be quiet at critical times, which might be impossible, or knowing, you know, where the pilot isolation button is. That allows me to go through my flow checks and checklist, oh, no, no, and talk out loud uh, to, to, to establish that redundancy where my ears are checking my mouth and all that without sounding crazy to my family um, or anybody that I'm flying with for that matter. And then when you're ready, you've done your checklist, you put it down, you can come back, uh, bring them in, bring them on board. How you doing, sweetheart? You good? Thumbs up? When you put your family, your kids, your wife, your loved ones in an airplane, uh, you want to make sure you're doing everything as safely as possible. And planning a cross-country flight, um, even though the tools we use have changed dramatically, the sort of system, the process, the procedure you use to do it um, hasn't really changed at all. The new technologies um, have temptations, right? The temptation to take your brain out of the equation, the temptation to let the computerized technology do all the planning for you. Um, this can be dangerous. As I learned myself, you know, one year flying into Oshkosh, um, I go to Oshkosh just about every year. I've been dozens of times. And for so many years, I would go in like a Cessna 172 slant uniform. <laughs> you know, no GPS at all. The planning was hard, often time consuming. It did not inspire confidence. You know, planning a cross country flight in, in the old days before four flight and all this other great technology, you know, you'd have to lay charts out on a table. You'd literally have to draw a line in pencil. Once I was sure I drew the line right and there was no airspace to contend with and no terrain issues, then I would highlight the line and then transfer it to other charts, maybe transfer it onto a terminal chart just in case I needed that. So there's a lot of time looking at that line and sort of studying it. And like I said, this kind of planning does not inspire confidence. It's not particularly accurate, but that's why you're so skeptical, right? And that's why so much of your brain is engaged while you're planning it. So once you draw your line and measure it and you get that true course, then you start picking out all of these little VFR checkpoints or maybe cross radials from VORs. Um, very conservative, right? And very skeptical in the way you approach that. Well, flash forward to 2009, I was managing an SR-22 for a private owner. And now this is a pretty fancy airplane, right? We've got multiple GPS units. We've got a three axis autopilot. We've got two giant displays. The one on the right can be a moving map or it can be traffic. And I'd been to Oshkosh dozens of times before. So, you know, I said to myself, hey, I'm just gonna program the airplane to go direct Ripon, which is the intersection where we're, you know, we're gonna start. I'll turn on the autopilot. I'll put the traffic display on the moving map and I will scan for traffic, monitor the engine gauges, um, and review the NOTAM. Well, I came really close to penetrating Waukegan's class Delta airspace, which would have been a pilot deviation, when I never would have made that mistake in an older 172. What does that say to me? It tells me that I'm a better pilot when I'm flying a worse airplane, that I'm not as good if you put me in a fancy machine because I tend to rely on the technology too much. So that's the caution, that's the danger I wanna point out about the new technologies, but, if you take that old school process, that old school skeptical mentality, and be systematic about the way you approach planning on the new stuff, like ForeFlight, it's extremely powerful. And you'll be far safer, but it really requires building on the lessons of the past while incorporating the tools of the present. Here's how it works. I'm just using ForeFlight here uh, with the aeronautical uh, map data turned on and everything else sort of turned off. And I just put one single line in to start San Carlos to Palm Springs. And you can see uh, we've got a couple airspace issues to deal with. Um, but just to follow the pr protocol here, let's just go ahead and measure that and get the true course. Um, so you can tell by this that the measurement is 357 nautical miles. Um, we only get the magnetic here in the uh, in the nav log, so let's go ahead and turn on the section and we'll just do the math. Uh, we'll pick one of these. Here's an isogonic line right here, cutting right through our route that says uh, 13 degrees easterly. So east is least, west is best. Um, now normally you'd be going from true and you would subtract to get the magnetic, but since we're given the magnetic of 114, we will add 13 to that. So 127 will be our true course 
and uh, 357 nautical miles. And then we can kind of just go back to modifying the route as we're going to need to for airspace here. And I think it will be a beautiful day on Friday, so we'll probably fly out to the coast to clear the airspace, maybe to just clear the 6,000 foot shelf right about there. And then we can climb to our cruise altitude of 7,500. Now we're just sort of studying this line, so I'm going to turn on the sectional. That helps me kind of see extra data. We'll be at 7,500. I don't see any numbers that would preclude that. Um, I don't see any restricted areas. Here are a couple MOAs. Uh, using the four flight data here, we can just tap that and hold, and we can get the details on the MOA, which tells us it's activated by NOTAM, so we'll make sure we get the NOTAMs that day. And we continue flying. We'll have a little bit of restricted area here. We just tap and hold. It goes all the way up. We're going to have to go around that one probably. We will ask them if, if it's cold and see if we can cut the corner, but for now we better plan. Let's give it a little wider margin than that. Something more like... Well, we just add Palmdale to the route. That seems wise. There it is. We've got some terrain issues here we'll have to look at. Now, this is where the 3D view is pretty, uh, pretty incredible. We can just sort of fly this flight and get down there and sort of see what we're going to see. And when we get to certain areas, you can always stop and pan around, look behind you. Now we're starting to get to an area where we've got a flight that's been been pretty well planned. We'll want to look that course line over in a bit more detail. Um, just sort of fo follow it along uh, on the sectional chart. But other than that, we were able to follow the planning process. Four flight makes getting the supplies easy. We'll just go ahead and pack for the flight to make sure we have everything we're going to need, notams, charts, uh, weather. And we'll also go manage databases and make sure that we have um, you know, some neighboring states just in case we have to divert. All right, you guys, so that's the end of our trip to Palm Springs. The family's here at the airplane. Uh, the airplane's pre-flighted. Our VFR flight plan is on file, and uh, we're ready to fly back to San Francisco. Just an awesome use of GA, and uh, I hope you enjoyed a little bit about how I take thoughts from yesteryear and apply them to today's flight planning. Huge thanks to the sponsors for their support of this video. A big thanks to the patrons also. Without that support, I just couldn't make these videos. Um, so if you want to be a part of the effort to get quality flight training out online available to everybody, please come visit patreon.com slash learn TFP. Also, big thanks to Michael Bazaar for providing the music. Uh, come say hello. Visit me online at Learn the Finer Points, uh, Facebook at The Finer Points, or uh, on our YouTube channel, or follow me on Instagram at Learn the Finer Points. Huge thanks to you for taking the time to watch this video. You're the best fans on the internet. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the alert bell to get notified of uploads, and until next time, be safe and fly your best.